Hello folks and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons here on Ukulele on the Ground. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I'm joined by two lovely gentlemen. And let me introduce you uh, them to you right now. Mr. Aaron, the voice. Now come on, what's up? Aaron. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend. Fergan, say what's up, Kahai. What's up? It is Thursday. That means we're going to answer any and all of your questions. We'll try to create some good discussions. Um, uh, Kahai is going to read off the questions. I'll try to. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Do you see this? Oh, <laughs> yes, we're just talking about this. We're just this. talking about this. <laughs> no, because I think he has a bug in the. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's last, right. That's last right. Thursday, we were talking about. <laughs> We were talking about Lion King before we went live. <laughs> and then, this is Mark, right? Uh-huh. Mark comes in as Mufasa. And I'm like, that's a cool coincidence. Mm-hmm. Today he came in as Spider-Man. And we were talking what? about Spider-Man. Talking about what Spider-Man. is going on? <laughs> when, on Spider-Man. I, so I read like, uh-huh. I read Trent's message, which says like, hey, Spider-Man, you're one of my favorite superheroes. And I'm like, <laughs> does Trent know we were talking about Spider-Man? <laughs> and then that's when I realized like, no. Like, oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. What is so, yeah, so in week. the in the chat when you sign okay. in, you can mm. kind of like create a name, create yeah. a name, yeah. and and so um, Mark has been <laughs> coming in with all, all kinds yeah. of different names. I, I I think the earliest one was Ariana Grande, but but I'm <laughs> Godzilla. I'm I think sure he's he, bugged this place. I, yeah, I think he he put a bug in our office, <laughs> and he's he's been listening into our our yeah. conversations before we go like, live. Last week we were talking about Lion King. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he was Mufasa, and now like today he's Spider Man. We well, just saw him with Spider Man. Yeah, and I'll. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's like as last week it was like Lion King because the Lion King trailer came out, yeah. right? I think it's I think he, he just saw Into the Spider Verse, so That's yeah, why. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. But that wasn't the reason we were talking about Spider. <laughs> we were talking about Spider Verse at all. Like no one, none of us saw Spider Verse yet. Yeah. And I think right before Kahai hit the button, I'm like, why don't we just talk about Spider Man the whole like the whole hour for Thursday Live? Let's act about I can talk about Spider Man for an hour. And then here comes Spider Man like coming into our chat. <laughs> what is the the like the meme that Spider Man like saves somebody who's like everybody gets one. <laughs> everybody gets one. <laughs> That's our Spider Man came in. I know. Right? Friendly neighborhood Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that threw, anyway, a, yeah. threw us off, <laughs> threw us off. off the game. All right. So, yeah, because I can't see. So you guys are just tripping out. And I'm like, yeah, what? what's going to on? Kahai. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah. Kahai is going to read off the questions. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And uh, these guys will chime in with their two cents. And we'll come up with the best possible answer or, even, you know, a great discussion about whatever subject that you want to talk about or whatever subject you want to ask about and kind of techniques and being ukulele related. We'll be here and happy to answer any and all of your questions for you all right so let's get started kahai give me a question for spider-man <laughs> uh so uh mark said or mm. spider-man <laughs> spider-man, from, from spider-man. <laughs> He, he said, ever since I started listening to ukulele, uh, YouTube has been suggesting banjo videos. Mm. I finally decided to click on one mm-hmm. uh, talking about blue, bluegrass banjo styles. Mm-hmm. And so he linked the video. And it's mm-hmm. actually a pretty interesting video breaking down the different diff- styles. Yeah, over the year and mm-hmm. kind of how they evolved, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but his question was, I was just curious, <clears throat> what are the classic ukulele styles mm-hmm. What about modern ukulele styles, and who are some uh, uk players that epitomize these styles? Okay, that's that's actually a great you know a great question, a great topic of discussion. We could talk about that for an hour because yeah. there's like so much you know so much styles. There's uh, you know styles that were around when like uh, when I was growing up, and there was some styles around when our parents were growing up, and when their parents were growing up. There's all these little um, different waves of ukulele style that just kind of happened to be popular. You know back. Way back then, when it when, when it first started, there's a lot of like um, uh, like Elvis kind of stuff or like Tin Pan Alley kind of things, and there's like you know there's the um, the wave of like Tiny Tim, and then there's the wave of like Herb Ulta and like Lau Ritz and all those guys playing all these like romantic and kind of jazz songs in the ukulele. And then there's guys like, you know, in Hawaii, like Peter Moon, who's like doing, you know, doing kind of the same thing, but mixing like Hawaii, like Hawaiian techniques in there. Like that's or quote unquote Hawaiian techniques, which would become like, you know, strictly like Hawaiian techniques. But um, it's great because talk about banjo. So let's get let's go from the beginning. I just I I have so much to say about this, about the subject. <laughs> so um, if you guys want to check it out, uh, Mark posted this question over on the UU Plus forum so you can watch that video that he posted about the banjo styles and stuff. Um, 
I actually saw that video um, a while back only because, you know, YouTube suggests the same thing to me as well. Like, you know, it'll, it'll give me some banjo videos. But I was actually looking for some banjo videos. And um, I was, uh, uh, it's not a secret anymore, I guess. Um, I, I give lessons to Lauren Bouchard, you know, the Bob's Burgers guy. And he's very interested in like, um, you know, in these different styles, like these kind of claw hammer kind of things. And he kind of wants to do things in the ukulele that, you know, that uh, that doesn't sound quite ukulele-ish, but he wants to kind of put his own spin into things. So I, I did some research in claw hammer technique and found that there's two, you know, there's two main styles. I mean, there's a lot of different styles in, in banjo playing, but in banjo playing, there's two main styles. Um which is the uh, you know the claw hammer style so you can play like claw hammer like oh i'm not too very i'm not too good at it but you know uh and then there's uh the style that that, that we like to play which is kind of like that bale of fleck like the um the, the flat picking kind of style so there's you know there's flat picking on the banjo and then there's uh, a more like country kind of style like with with the uh, with the hammer-ons and stuff more folksy kind of sounding so that's what i found and then i thought about it which is basically kind of like the ukulele um in the ukulele world there is i want to break it down to three like three main ones or maybe even four i'll break it up to four different ones so the first one is that kind of um very european tin pan alley very heavy on the you know on the split strokes kind of style i think that's you know that's one of the uh one one of the most earliest styles that you know that, that i can uh, that i can remember with the ukulele and then um can you do something oh similar? i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to try to make like i know how and then like it's just like no that's not no like, that's, that's not, not how you do that's it that's not like, how you do that's it that's not how you do it because because i don't i mean if you were to tell bela fleck you know like oh do something like kind of claw hammer he'd be like <laughs> i can but i you know like it's kind of not his thing. yeah exactly you know hammer. Not so like be. uh like what like five foot two five foot two like um the kind of tim pan alley yeah a lot classics. of like george formby you know like yeah. that kind of stuff like that's that's all that you know that that style very split stroke very like kind of fan stroke double you know double time and things like that um that was pretty early on from you know from what i believe i mean of course there were those hawaiian you know like uh players in hawaii kind of using it for like you know for for strumming and whatever but as far as you know, um, like a, a solo ukulele kind of style. That's more, you know, um, that was one of the first ones, one of the earlier ones. And, you know, this is just based, like, on my experience. I'm sure a historian is going to come in like, yeah. no, 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 Audrey, this is what came first. Yeah. So, you know, well, I mean, like, I'm just, the, the I'm just ukulele, listing them off from, from what I, you know. Yeah, I so, know. like, the ukulele was kind of, like, created in, like, mm-hmm. the late 1800s mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then got popular in the early 1900s. Yeah, yeah. And so... Throughout history, it's always been just whatever, you know, was popular in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. music culture yeah. at the yeah. time kind of influences what mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the ukulele I believe was used for. So. Kamaka's first one was in 1916, if, they're, if they held their 100th anniversary in 2016. Yeah. So that's 1916. And that's kind of like the, the first yeah. wave of yeah. popularity. Oh, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so that 1920s Tin Pan yeah, Alley, Tin kind, Pan of Alley kind of stuff, it, it's, it, it was really popular then. And then, um, you got guys like, uh, like Tiny Tim, who's kind of like got that same, you know, that same style and bring it into mainstream. But also you, you got guys like Lau Ritz, who was, uh, and, um, <clears throat> who was, was taking the ukulele in kind of this jazz, um, you know, this, this jazz style. So that, I believe that's kind of the next, um, yeah, or, or the, uh, huh? So yeah, number be, two. That's, that's number, number two. two. So that's like jazzy. the um, the evolution of, of what you know what the ukulele because they're playing a lot of cool you know like jazzy chords. But Lau Ritz kind of took it to like a jazz guitarist you know kind of a uh, kind of way because Lau Ritz very you know very uh, prominent with the jazz guitar. Kind of took everything that he knew in the guitar, played it on you know on his uh, on his Gibson baritone ukulele or a tenor kind of tenor y baritone tenor. Um, <clears throat> ukulele. That's that's a different discussion. <laughs> like, what, was it a tenor? Was it a baritone? Is it an ukulele? Is it a guitar? It's, mm-hmm. I think we've had that before. Um, and then guys like uh, um, Herb Olta, you know, like uh, saw saw guys like that, and it's like, okay, well, you know, let's let's try to do you know do some kind of chord stuff. So and then, huh? Uh, just just to clarify though, this is Herb Olta senior, right? senior, yeah, senior, yeah. senior, yeah, very two Herb. Olta. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then like. Um, Otasan, I, Otasan, yeah, 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 Otasan. So Otasan, um, and guys like Peter Moon, um, another guy like Eddie Kamai. Those guys started kind of taking it to like you know to a totally different level, where they're combining some banjo techniques, you know, and, and that 
stems from the uh, like Hawaiian slacky stuff because uh, Peter Moon very 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 good at you know very good at the guitar very good at regular guitar very good at like slacky guitar so he's incorporating some of those like kind of banjo like techniques to the ukulele and that's you know the uh, one of the first times we hear uh, like riffs like 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 things yeah, like yeah. that like Eddie Komai and uh, oh, wow. um, and yeah that kind of pull off mm-hmm. kind of technique you know Eddie Komai and and Peter Moon and then um, you know with uh, with with Herb Ota they're kind of taking these and they taking these styles but <clears throat> Herb Ota was more kind of like the uh, like more more jazzy but he's taking like normal kind of pop songs you know back in the day that's why Herb Ota had like a lot of albums mm-hmm. in like 30 40 50 maybe 100 he had a lot of albums he did, yeah and uh and mental uh, versions of right popular it's, songs exactly so he took yeah. a lot of those and he did you know like cool little like chord you know chord melody type of uh type of arrangements to it so he took uh styles like uh what you know what uh the tin pan alley stuff and uh and while what, what lauritz was doing and kind of did it you know on, on his on his own so it's like a combination i don't really want to name it as you know one uh, one style. It's like a combination of the two earlier styles, <clears throat> and um, guys like Eddie Kamai and uh, and Peter Moon, um, I think they sparked the you know the uh, the late eighties um, renaissance in the ukulele when the Kyle Crater Boys started coming in because Kyle Crater Boys, uh, Troy Fernandez heavily took a uh, big a lot of influence from Peter Moon, and you can tell like a lot of the um, a lot of the songs. That Troy Fernandez has done in his ukulele career has also been done by Sunday Manoa, which is you know like um, uh, a, a Peter Moon, you know, Peter Moon's uh, Peter Moon's band, and also by uh, the Peter Moon band, which is <laughs> Peter Moon's band, and uh, you know he was inspired by that. Like, Kavika is one of you know one of Troy Fernandez's signature songs, which is also Peter Moon's Tro- uh, Peter Moon's signature song. So if you listen to the solo, like at the end of uh, of Kavika, which is basically like our like hotel california you know like that's it's got that like really long like uh solo ending and stuff it's almost note for note like identical so, to uh, troy fernandez troy fernandez covered uh, his, covered his that. version is pretty much identical right. to the but Peter then Moon guys version. like us like you know growing up um so you know it, it's it's kind of crossing to when we were growing up and we're like we've never heard like the old peter moon version of uh you know of of say like guava jam or or even kavika and things like that. So when we hear like oh what's this fresh new take on the ukulele because it's it's like it's exciting and it's got this style but it's actually you know back then kind from of like originated Moon, yeah but Peter like Moon. Troy Fernandez kind of fine tuned it and really doubled down on that banjo like style I, whereas huh? and I think it really helped with like Kyle Crater Boy how it was him and Ernie Cruz right yeah like because then if, if it's like. I mean, not to say it's bad with mm-hmm. more people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but with him and Ernie Cruz, or, yeah, it could like he could really shine, right? Uh-huh, like uh-huh. with the soloing, yeah. it's like, yeah. oh yeah, and, like people know, like oh, it's Troy, Troy yeah, because playing it, souls. Because I mean, like uh, in um, Ernie wasn't you know wasn't like. He, he wasn't too shabby at soloing either like you can hear his solo in, in songs like are you missing me there's like a guitar solo in that and you're like mm-hmm. okay well you know ernie can uh, can hold his own and stuff but troy was really the uh like the star of like the instrumental parts so, yeah. you know on, on the uh on the songs because they know that a lot of ukulele players are going to copy or going to be you know like playing mm-hmm. these songs so they wanted to you know to be kind of ukulele heavy <clears throat> so um, that's like the third style. It's like that Troy Fernandez, like you know, uh, it's it's a evolved style of what like um, what Peter Moon and those guys kind of you know like kind of uh, set up for you know for guys like Troy Fernandez. And then you got guys like Jake Shimabukuro, which is like the fourth and final one, which is where we're currently at right now. Guys like Jake Shimabukuro took everything you know from uh from the first three styles that we talked about so that really fast kind of tin pan alley strums and whatnot you know he doesn't do the same style but he's got that really fast right hand he also has uh you know he can take pop songs and he can make them you know make them really sing like how herb Ota does you know and he just like herb Ota, i think sometimes herb Ota puts you know put some like flamenco spin you know two two things and so did eddie Kamai and so did uh peter moon he does that as well you know so whenever you hear like like things like that that's like reminiscent of like old um herb ota uh or otasan i should just say otasan like otasan yeah. and peter moon and guys like that 
But then, you know, he's like putting his own really classical jazz uh, jazz twist to it. Even though there's guys like, you know, Lau Ritz, who was, uh, who was doing jazz back in the day. This is like kind of this brand new evolved form of all three styles combined. So I'm really excited to see what the next evolution of, of ukulele styles is. But that's, for me, the timeline of the four main ones. I mean, there's little subcategories in, in between all of those. Yeah, but I think and regional main, kind of yeah. categories. But I think yeah. mainly those four are what's you know what's really been big. So if you go to some some place like the UK, everyone's gonna be like, yeah, George Formby. You know, it's like mm-hmm. just like the that's a standard. You know, that's a standard bearer of uh, of how ukulele is supposed to be played there in in the UK because that was you know back then it worked. You know, it worked since day one, I, I guess, think- and they're still obsessed with it, which is awesome because it's great. Yeah, well, like you were saying, like how Crater Boys is like for us, right? Yeah, and yeah. we're still obsessed with it. Yeah, and, yeah. and like that is definitely like the mm-hmm. music that I grew up with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it just seems like in the UK, it's like they kind of miss that whole yeah. generation. And because it was like a stuff. Hawaii only, because back then, like late eighties and nineties and stuff. Um, you know, there was like no engineer yeah. really. Like, yeah. so they can't. We can't really trade information. We're like, oh, this is what we're doing now. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. And um, and same you know same thing where like we didn't know what they were doing across the pond you know mm-hmm. because uh, and so they're doing their own thing so the ukulele evolved over there so you got guys like um, uh, ukulele zaza and ukulele off like these guys who are perpetuating that style and kind of evolving that George mm-hmm. Formby style and then you got you know guys over here like Jake like Kale Taimani who are perpetuating and evolving the uh, the styles like Ota Sun and Peter Moon and all that. So you can kind of see where it, like it's split into two. But it's like it it is cool that it's like the same family, but mm-hmm. it is just like yeah. like when and when we look at those guys like from the UK, mm-hmm. it's just like I don't know how you do this. <laughs> like cuz it's just like yeah. such a different way of growing mm-hmm. up, right? Like even mm-hmm. the the groove or mm-hmm. the, the feel of music is like so different from mm-hmm. what we know. Yeah. Uh, and the, and then I don't want to discount guys who are, you know, like, who are also, like, singers that, like, you know, that uh, that take the ukulele to, like, to different heights and stuff. Like, guys like um, Kelly Boy De Lima, you know, who's, like, a great singer, but also an amazing, you know, amazing player. But he's, you know, he's borrowing techniques from uh, from Peter Moon as well. Where yeah, he's doing a he lot of those, yeah, a lot of those pull-offs and stuff. Yeah. So that's, you know, like, it, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but he added his own spin to it to... Uh, to match what he was doing when he was singing, you know, and then he had like a great guitar player and a bass player to back him up while he's doing all these riffs while he's singing. Amazing. If you guys haven't heard Capenna, Capenna is like one of the most legendary bands here in Hawaii from like starting from the late 80s. And, uh, and they're still active, you know, the, the children are like what's yeah. kind of uh, what's keeping that band going. And it's great, you know. Um, Let's see, guys like uh, Imua Garza, who, you know, who played for like OP uh, for OP Pickers. He took all those, you know, all those styles as well. So he's got this really nice classical, you know, classical style like that Ota San would do. But he's got these pull offs that like that um, that guys like Peter Moon would do. But he also has like different new techniques that like more classical guitarists and like more some electric, electric guitarists guitar. yeah like that that would do and he's kind of incorporating that to do ukulele as well and same thing you know same thing with jake but i think he more does it in a way where like it's you know it complements his his voice too because he's you know he's a great singer but i'm not going to discount like how amazing he is at the ukulele and his mm-hmm. uh if you guys are interested in more garza pick up his album called dream speaking um i don't know if it's available anymore but that that album is is crazy good and it's just like a peek into like Imua Garza's head and it's just like what <laughs> i think yeah. i think you were telling me Aaron right when you guys were filming the masterclass with him or something he just said like oh i just like locked myself in my room for like a little bit and i just like wanted to learn as like much as i could yeah and it's like i think <laughs> for a lot of like this the same new, story <laughs> yeah the, this new generation right yeah. you hear that right yeah. where it's just like I really love like you know Kyle Crater mm-hmm. Boys music or something, mm-hmm. and it's just locking myself in my room <laughs> and being like, I gotta figure out how <laughs> these guys play like this. I gotta figure it out, and I gotta try and mm-hmm. recreate mm-hmm. or come up with something mm-hmm. like my own technique mm-hmm. that will best like kind of match what they're doing, yeah. but also be like <laughs> something that I can do right. Or there is a old PBS special. I don't know if like if it's online somewhere, but there's an old PBS special where like it was Jake Shimabukuro. Um, uh, Peter Moon 
and um, and Kelly Boy DeLima. It's like three different, like distinctly different styles and stuff. Who was uh, kind of you know showing showing what they could do, but then in the end they jammed like Pandanus, you know. And I love that song Pandanus. I think we gotta we gotta teach that one of these days here. But um, and it was really interesting because you can kind of tell like and you can see like the evolution of the ukulele like when when Peter Moon's kind of doing his thing he's like you know he you can tell that like okay this is inspired by like a lot of classical music and a lot of like you know kind of um banjo slack key kind of techniques and stuff but he makes it he makes it work and then here comes like uh, Kelly Boy de Lima who like doubled down on that he's doing a lot of pull-offs and stuff and then here comes Jake who's like strumming it up and doing some like some cool little like flamenco runs and stuff it's really 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 cool I don't know I I don't even know what that thing is called. It's like a PBS special. I like, uh, I, I can only three guys. I can only imagine that they had fun mm. too, like oh, yeah, performing together. Because it's probably like mm. when you know uh, Peter Moon is like playing, uh-huh. then Kelly Boy and Jake are probably like looking at him and be like, "Oh my gosh, he's Watch. doing, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. doing the thing, he's <laughs> doing yeah. the thing." And then like when Kelly Boy yeah. starts playing, it's like, mm. "Oh, oh wow, he took like this <laughs> thing." And he, oh, I can see like it's. Or it's like almost like mm-hmm. when uh, uh, Neo in the Matrix, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, I can see, like, <laughs> Matrix, he can, yeah, yeah, he can see the numbers. It's like you can just see, like, oh, I can see where this <laughs> came from. I can see where this, you know. I remember um, watching that special, and I was uh, that was around the, the the time that I became friends with Jake and stuff. And um, he told me a little fun fact. If you guys can find that video, he's playing an ukulele in there that was actually in the cover the second pure heart album but on the second pure heart album he's he has a uke on his hand and you never ever see him play you know like and like any other time that is it's like a concert kamaka ukulele and um he's playing it for the cover he used to play that but i think not not long after he got it it got stolen like oh. yeah it was like i think they were like trying to. Uh, they they got to a hotel. They're like trying to like move everything up, and it didn't make it. Like oh, somebody no. like swiped it and stuff. And I remember hearing that. I'm like, what? That's like one of the nicest you seen in the <laughs> I've seen. And it's like, nope. I guess it's it's gone. Who's, <laughs> who's that bass player who like he's a famous bass player and he ripped out like all the frets of his bass. Hmm. Like, and I think yeah. the same story with him. Like mm-hmm. people are like saying like, oh, that bass is like legendary, and then yeah. he just like. It got stolen, so I just needed oh. like I think he oh. ripped off like the frets of his new bass, but mm-hmm. he's like, oh, it's not the same, you know. It's like oh. trying to, but it's not quite. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know, like the best uh, the best ukes are not necessarily what you think would be the perfect best, ones. Yeah, yeah. The best instruments. Um, like my, I mean, I love kanilea, and I'm gonna, I'm always going to love my kanilea and all all my kanilea ukuleles and stuff. But I feel. Like with the seasoning that that um that Mika had my Kamaku ukulele, just because like that's when I was really doing most of my you know most of my learning and most of my experimentations and stuff, I had that ukulele. And I think because the sheer amount of like hours and sweat, blood, sweat, and tears that I put in <laughs> that, like it sounds the best. And mm-hmm. now like my mother in law has it and uses it for her church, <laughs> 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 like a legendary ukulele is just being like played <laughs> like at like Montebello. Christian church in California. <laughs> I I know like Aaron has his flute too, right? Like, and that's been with you since like <laughs> yeah, like for a pretty long time. And then I have a like I have a Taylor guitar where I played it enough where like where your hand rests mm-hmm. is just worn down. Uh-huh. Like not not only the varnish is uh-huh. like the wood itself is uh-huh. like getting worn down. Yeah. So yeah. it's just yeah. yeah. We we have a an ukulele in the office that came to us cracked right mm. oh yeah the ohana yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and it sounds fantastic <laughs> so, so, so it's yeah. like one of those things yeah we, we couldn't give it away where it was mm. supposed to be a giveaway mm. um early on in mm. the underground have i oh, told but... that story of how i got that kamaka like the tenor kamaka mm. Mm. i don't know oh okay just yeah you... it is, this is this a, this okay, a wait, story. so let's, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go back re- go back before recap, i tell the story yeah. so like so first first kind of wave was like mm. the 1920s Tintana, it was kind of yeah. ramping up to the 1920s mm. so um Lauritz, that, Lauritz, that type Jazzy. that type of music was popular in the 1920s mm-hmm. that uh mm-hmm. tin pan alley stuff then you would say maybe the second 40s, wave was like 40s 50s 40s 50s so mm. Lyle, that was loud and uh and some ulta son you know like that's he's kind of doing like some uh some jazzy stuff because he's heard of Lauritz, you know and mm-hmm. he's just kind of like 
like how like he's hearing like these things because Ota San used you know used to be like yeah I pretty much the best ukulele player in the world you know like he uh <laughs> there's like a story of him like winning um winning this radio contest it was uh-huh. like a radio contest and he would go and he said that like uh he won first place and his uh in his prize was like a like a like a comb like a fine tooth comb brush oh. or he's like he went back again the next day won it again back again the next day and they're like you can't you can't enjoy enter it. you can't enter anymore yeah. that's like yeah that's a legendary story that he always tells yeah. and stuff. so that was like the 60s 70s yeah um that was when when herb ota senior mm-hmm. was and then like the... he's like okay well there's this guy like across the pond like you know that he's heard of like that does all these like crazy things and stuff and that's I believe kind of the start of like um Ota like doing you know like doing doing the the jazzy kind more of chords jazz. and, yeah, but so then he was like more the of a 70s. pop guy and you know Ota Sun's got a lot of like accolades to his name like uh like for playing with like the Philharmonic and stuff like he's done some amazing stuff in his career uh-huh. um there's a uh, so that's the second wave kind of jazzy yeah and then so um, 60s and 70s yeah then um Late then, 80s, early 90s, that was kind of like... That's the, uh, the evolution, that. you know, the evolution of it. Because it was starting, it started like in the 70s with um, with uh, Peter Peter Moon and all those guys, yeah, like yeah. taking those. But then it wasn't really refined until Troy Fernandez took it and kind of ran with it. Yeah, and that so was I, like I mean, early 90s. Right? Yeah, it, late 80s, early 90s. Because I think the first Kaal album was in the 90s, but I think there were... Like kind of playing birthday parties and stuff like that. Like yeah, back in... and then I I kind of want to say that it never really stopped from that. Point. No, that's... no, no. That's that's Cause... style is still going on today. Yeah, you cause... got guys like fingers here. It kind of just morphed into yeah. this new style mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. from then throughout the nineties because. Yeah. That's kind of when the internet started getting popular, mm-hmm, like throughout right. the nineties, yeah. and people could see what was right. going on everywhere. Right, right. And then like that that. You know, like that that riff yeah, and yeah. stuff you hear that still like to this day yeah you got guys like um I- imua not, not imua garza but like the band imua who's got you know those same kind of riffs in there you got uh, even like in some of peaky pickers you know he's like he's playing you know like yeah, uh, he's playing homage to like yeah you know, to those kind of styles yeah. and stuff so you can tell that that's like really where that uh style took off you know, guys like Peter Moon and stuff, they made that, you know, they made that style awesome. Like, they're the ones who started that that kind of style of taking the the things that Herb Ota was doing, things that Lyle Ritz was doing, and, the, and then adding their own kind of slacky and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and classical styles to it. But then guys like, uh, um, like Troy Fernandez kind of took it, simplified it, and made it like a thing. Mm-hmm. Is, is when it became really, like, it became uh, a... Like pull off style, you know, like it's just just that, like kind of slacky Hawaiian ukulele. Or right, I can I can also see too where that mm. that's like that uh, ukulele style plus like it's also kind of like when they're using that style with like Jawaiian music mm. too, right? Mm-hmm. And you hear that like in when you did you said like oh the Peaky Pickers played like that riff, mm-hmm. I like oh yeah I can clearly hear that <laughs> like in so many of like Jawaiian bands, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, where yeah. they just have. They'll have like a ukulele player, and it's like he can do like a little bit of things, and he just puts it in here. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you know, and it, add it, some riffs and stuff. It and really it. just stemmed from, uh, you know, from from Troy Fernandez and like, and the Roy Sakuma like school was kind of perpetuating the uh, like the the Ota style, where they're kind of like doing this like thumb kind of technique. Mm-hmm. Where that's like where that came from, and that's why Jake is the evolution of that. Whereas Troy Fernandez is the evolution of guys like. Um, Peter Moon and Eddie Kamai mm-hmm. Jake was an evolution of guys like La Ritz and Ota San and it's like it's super cool too cause mm-hmm. like Eddie Kamai and yeah. Ota San they yeah. like play together yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. and they're like known as like mm-hmm. oh yeah we're friends it's, yeah. Like, it's just we have two different mm-hmm. styles and then so it's really cool I mean, yeah, I mean yeah, Eddie Kamai everything. it also did like classical and, and stuff like that on the ukulele you know and um but yeah like guys like Peter Moon who's you know like a you you listen to uh, songs like Hey Hava Iao, like you know he's got some awesome like ukulele you know picking like uh, Kavika, 
um, a lot of stuff. And Hey Hawaii is covered by Troy Fernandez in their Palolo album. It's like you can tell that he's a That's, huge, yeah, he's yeah, a, like a Peter Moon fan. fan. Yeah. yeah, and kind of like me, like you can tell I'm a huge. Like Troy Fernandez and Jake Shimabukuro fans, because that's like a lot of stuff that we play live. You know, we play a lot of um, a lot of stuff from uh, from the Kyle Creator Boys catalog, which we didn't I didn't know back then was part of like the Peter Moon catalog. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like, okay, well, so I guess I'm copying evolved. Peter Moon instead. Yeah. yeah, but the evolution is what you know what what we're talking about, and that's kind of where it was refined. It was guys like Troy Fernandez who really refined that style and made it like um, like. The the style of ukulele playing. The the joke we always say, right, is like, oh, this is originally done by a car creator, <laughs> and it's kind of it's a joke, but it's also mm. like with the Hawaii kids, mm. it's kind of true. Like <laughs> you ask, like uh, we were hanging out with Craig and Sarah, mm-hmm. and it's like Craig was like, oh yeah, I, you know, he started Rhythm playing of the rain, <laughs> yeah, and then Sarah's like, no, it's about it's cascades. cascades, like not realizing, like, oh, you mean Kyle Creator Boys isn't the original? <laughs> I think it's just like a lot of kids, right? Is or like uh, I know for me, I grew up with like. The Kyle Crater Boys version of Brown Eyed Girl. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I didn't hear the Van Morrison version mm-hmm. until like way later, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, I guess this mm-hmm. is where it came from. <laughs> or like uh, Stand By Me mm-hmm. or Friend of the Devil, all those mm-hmm. things. Yeah. It's like, yeah. just grew up with the Kyle Crater Boys version. Yeah, mm-hmm. so Kyle Crater Boys, um, also, Troy Fernandez has a band that did a lot of Hawaiian music called Palolo, which is uh, Troy Fernandez, Nathan. And Chino Montero, I forget Nathan's middle name. Nathan something. Not Avial though. <laughs> Char <laughs> Nathan and Chino Montero. The late Chino Montero, uh, I should say. Um, that's like a great like Hawaiian ukulele album. If you can find the first Palolo album, that's got like a lot of iconic like Hawaiian tunes to it. Like Hey Hawaiiao, it's got Nani Waimea, it's got um like Tears of My Pillow, like it's got like land down under a lot of the stuff that 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 we play still here you know and um a lot of the songs that they did was like peter moon band songs it's really Mm -hmm. cool but like a modern from the 90s you know 90s modern take on like 70s music which is really cool so check that out uh it's pretty rare but i think you can still find it like on maybe on ebay i know there's like a guy who's doing like bootleg stuff from like old hawaii <laughs> that's how i got my pure heart cds oh my god creative boy cds and stuff because yeah. uh my original ones from the 90s like I, they're all like scratched out and whatever uh, i played them on my playstation until uh, i like, <laughs> couldn't play anymore and i wanted physical copies so i ordered some from like from ebay a while back i don't know if that guy's still doing it but it was like <laughs> 15 bucks a cd where he probably just burned it for a dollar and got 14 bucks of my money <laughs> When did when did um, Jake go uh, and start doing like his solo, solo stuff? Two thousand one. Okay, I so that's kind of like right around the same time that Imua Garza's Dream Speaking yeah. came out. It was like two thousand three. Yeah. So from from two thousand mm-hmm. on, basically, mm-hmm. that's kind of the next next generation. Yeah, like um, yeah. Not that you know Jake wasn't doing like amazing things with Pure Heart and stuff, but like. People didn't know like the current Jake, like how we yeah, know yeah. him now, because uh, back then he relied on like you know like a guitar rhythm and like uh, uh-huh. and percussions and stuff, so and he then... could do things like body surfing, or whatever. Like you wouldn't see him do body surfing in his concerts now because that's more of a pure heart thing. Unless he's playing with pure heart, he can't. You're not really gonna hear body surfing, even right. though it's one of his songs. And that's a that's a Otasan song, so you yeah. can tell that that's where he you know he stems from. He got it from yeah. The... Or like or um the the songs were mm-hmm. like uh bring me your cup or mm-hmm. any like uh, any of the UB forty songs mm-hmm. they play too and yeah. that's kind of like that's also mm-hmm. like with pure heart right they they mm-hmm. took this <laughs> this reggae band from yeah. the, the England right like that's where UB forty UB forty and then they're they, coming to Kauai are you gonna go uh no I'm probably not <laughs> I don't know I I I just don't go to mm-hmm. concerts but um. <laughs> Like uh, they took that, and mm-hmm. then they they're like, "Oh, we can we can play these songs too, right?" <laughs> like so, yeah. you can kind of hear that too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, and we didn't even talk about James Hill. <laughs> oh, yeah, James okay, Hill so, is like I know. Okay, where no, where that's, where that's a different path from like the, totally that's a tin pan path. alley. Like yeah, uh, that starts from there and then like takes off on its own, goes like, out yeah. towards Canada. So maybe <laughs> yeah. there's a I'll, yeah there's a fifth or a sixth one even you know. I was gonna say like in the family tree that's like 
Like you have everybody <laughs> going down, right? And then James yeah. Hill is like an alien, like on the side, <laughs> like oh he's he's humanoid, but he is just like yeah. you know a whole different yeah, thing. Yeah, seven I'm gonna take fingers a, on one hand. <laughs> we'll take a quote from Bob's Burgers, Louise. Enough about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like uh, yeah, I can't believe I, you know I I, I forgot yeah. that. And we actually we had like um a discussion with with, with James, James and how like how he got his soul. I'm I wasn't, I'm thinking that's like the fifth or even sixth version of that because his teacher was uh that would be the fifth style, but that only like, but it's that kind existed of like a in that one region. Style, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It, it, but then like um James would be the evolved version of that, whereas like. You know, his teacher was like the Ota son, and then he's like the Jake. And he not comparing him to Jake at all or anything, but just in this, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, but like, it's like they're two masters of yeah, their yeah, own yeah, thing. So so. Uh, but like, he he and <laughs> Aaron has a CD, right? Like, what is it called? James. Oh James no, 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 it wasn't even James Hill. It was the people versus, versus funk. The funk. Yeah, that's uh, not James. That's as, the people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like James Hill, kind of he he went to a, like music uh, school for music, mm-hmm. and um, he was experimenting with all different. Like James is just an amazing musician. Yeah, he's he knows how to play and works and all kinds of ways. instruments. Yeah. And he he's able to play them proficiently, mm-hmm. and he was able to put together a full album. Just of himself when he was in college, you know, <laughs> just for funsies. Yeah, uh, like yeah. a funk album, yeah. and it's like pretty good. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. And so, like you know, he uh, since then he kind of really channeled all mm-hmm. of it, his energy into ukulele mm-hmm. and took it to places that no one ever thought mm-hmm. that you know it could go. So yeah, so I mean, you know, like I said, we're not like we we don't claim to be historians or whatever. We're just kind of talking about based on our own experiences and. And uh, I'm sure there's like a style like in some other like country that's like, oh, well, we've been playing this style here like this. And we even tune our ukuleles like that. Kind of like how they tune, you know, in, in A over in Canada. It's, um, yeah, it's got to be a lot. But I'm guessing six. I'm going to count six now. Like, you know, very kind of distinct, sure yeah, distinct styles. styles. I'm sure if we keep talking mm-hmm. about it, though, right, it would be like, oh yeah, I'd be like, oh, oh no, there's seven and there's eight and there's oh. ten of them. Like, well, maybe like seven and a half. <laughs> and, oh, what about this person? I'm like, okay, eight. Yeah, and but then, like, you know what, guys? Um, just as a reminder, a bunch of those people are still performing today. So if you have a chance to check out any of these legends play, I would suggest you take it. You know, guys like Tor Fernandez, he's still playing out there. Um, you know, bless his soul. Uh, Ernie Cruz Jr. like passed away not too long ago, so like the chance of seeing them both as Kyle Crater boys has kind of come and gone. Mm-hmm. But you can still see Troy, you know, like so and go see Troy if you have a it, chance to see Troy. It, it is like especially right mm-hmm. kind of at the end, right? Of yeah, because yeah. it's really cool because you see Ernie Cruz in Kyle Crater boys. Mm-hmm. And then Ernie Cruz with Umuo Garza. Oh, yeah, that's the next level stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, oh my gosh. It's yeah. Like, and then, you know, of course, I'm, I mean, I'm sure a bunch of you folks have seen Jake before. But if you haven't seen Jake, if you want to see, like, a real master play the ukulele, like Jake and James are still, you know, still touring, still playing. Go see them. Um, Ota-san is still playing, mainly in Japan and Hawaii and stuff. But if you have any opportunity to watch that man play, watch that man play. Who else is still around and, and playing? This is- Peter Moon passed. He's no longer he's no longer playing. I got to see him, though. Like I, And Eddie Kumai. I got to see both. I was kind of stoked and i think any kamai like nobody really knew what was you know what was playing <laughs> like, or who was playing the ukulele mm-hmm. at that point mm-hmm. everyone's kind of walking by i'm like oh my god it's any kamai <laughs> playing yeah. uke of all things because he's usually a guitar player uh-huh. I'm like oh this is some like rare opportunity yeah kelly boy right mm-hmm. and kelly boy kelly boy is still playing yeah. you know um who else uh you, you can also see like people i mean we didn't you will garza he's still playing sometimes yeah uh, like Uncle Willie plays on mm-hmm. ukulele, so mm-hmm. like he kind of does half a show with yeah. guitar and ukulele. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and He's then it. there's other musicians too who will mm-hmm. kind of do that too. Who they split their time between guitar. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. So check out their calendars and stuff. Like if you guys have any opportunities to see these awesome players play, I would highly, highly, highly suggest it. And I mean, as that's we live in the golden age of the ukulele, I believe, where like all these distinctive styles actually have you know uh, have a place in, in everybody like i've been to thailand and uh, you know there's a lot of guys that kind of want to play like jake and, and and james and stuff like they have that style but then there's also guys like apirak who's a 
who's paying homage to like the the um the, the herb Ota like the Ota san style and he plays you know he plays it that way and you got guys playing like the kind of troy fernandez way and they're you know it's 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 here now and all these Some, styles are available it's great somebody else that i thought of too that kind of like to me it's like oh he kind of like it went off on his own too right is mm. jason like yeah arimoto yeah he, yeah where you can hear like mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. course like jason grew up like on oahu right mm-hmm. and grew up with influences like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but then now he's like probably one of the best blues mm-hmm. ukulele mm-hmm. players mm-hmm. in the world right so yeah just... so it's tough right now because we're such a, like in a golden age and almost like a renaissance and in, in, in ukulele playing to uh to kind of name another player like that kind of influential of a player because jake is still at the top of the hill you know it's not like yeah. a, oh everyone's playing a clay gummy style now it's like no because his style is still like kind of jake, well, jake hasn't know, like, like yeah gone down any... no jake is full steam ahead you yeah know? like he i think he just did a uh, track with michael mcdonald he did like winter wonderland <laughs> and stuff i'm like Geez. and i think he's setting up for a collab with like willie nelson i'm like that guy's not slowing down anytime soon yeah. he's yeah. he's a uh, bullet train Come on. <laughs> Come on, not running out of gas anytime soon so it's crazy because i want to see the next evolution of ukulele but i feel that like i'm not gonna see it and not anytime soon at least you know there's there's some kids though where we watch and it's like mm-hmm. oh this kid obviously has like yeah i mean I've, i'm seeing new styles all the time but not anything like as taking influential off. yeah taking off like yeah. i'm not seeing everybody do like you know like that kind of percussive style that's that's kind of you know getting not super popular but it, it's you know it's gaining some speed but not everyone's going to be doing that you know doing that kind of style with like the percussion and stuff uh, although really cool, really flashy, I love it, but I just don't, I can't compare that to say like like Troy Fernandez pull off kind of you know kind of playing like it's not gonna be as big as that. I I, think, I, I mean I'd like to see it to be that I, to be that popular. Yeah. Well, you never know to, because yeah. you know that the time span between like Peter Moon and Troy Fernandez that that's true. That it's was like about ten years 10. or so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's like true. you don't know what it's going to be. You mm, know? That's true. I think. I think the biggest like change kind of was mm-hmm. between that Tim Pan Alley and the Peter Moon, right? Mm-hmm. Like from like that, the twenties to like the seventies. Like, yeah, that's yeah. like a big time. Yeah, yeah, that's where you can see like the biggest change, right. and then from there it's kind of like smaller evolution. But, but right? I feel like like that Jake, Jake has ruled since like two thousand. You know, since he came out pure heart, where like I'm, he just yeah. overshadowed the uh, like the Troy Fernandez style of playing. I was you know? right at that that point. I remember thinking like. He's not gonna make it on his own. <laughs> like he needs like yeah. the backing. Like mm-hmm. how is he gonna just do solo, solo <laughs> arrangements of things like for a whole oh, concert? Yeah. Like yeah. I, nobody's gonna listen to that, you know? Because like because <laughs> even what we knew, right? Like yeah. Kyle Crater Boys, it was at least two of them. Yeah, yeah. There was like singing, Something. yeah, singing and like a backup mm-hmm. instrument, and then yeah. you could let the ukulele shine. And it was it was and really I, unique, like his his journey and stuff. Because I mean, like. Uh, you know, he was he was managed by, or at least Pure Heart was managed by John's parents, right? Mm-hmm. So John's parents are the ones that's like kind of taking him. Like he didn't manage himself. Like he's always had a manager, and his next manager after um, Sheldon Yamasato was uh, uh, Kazusa Flanagan, mm-hmm. which Kazusa Flanagan has never managed anyone before then. Like, yeah, but she, she she had the connections in Japan. Yeah, she had the connection in Japan. I think she worked at like um, like the radio stations. She just knew like yeah. people, yeah. but then like. You know, as far as, like, managing somebody and, like, arranging tours and stuff, like, she had no experience in doing anything yeah. like that. And that, that's but, why I thought, like, well, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to be big in Japan. Big in Japan, like, like how old is, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. But dang, that guy's take off. And it's, like, <laughs> ukulele disco, you know? Ukulele disco, like, put up that While My Guitar Gently Weeps video, and that's, like, that, even Jake will, t- you know, will tell you that, like, it's from that point on mm-hmm. where he became like an international like mega star yeah. in ukulele yeah. when people kind of saw yeah. what you could do with yeah. just an ukulele mm-hmm. it kind of blew everybody away but before so. then I think you know he he would have been if if he didn't do that I mean maybe maybe he would have come up with something because he's, yeah. he's Jake and stuff but you know it's very uh, it's it's not um, unusual to say that like he would have been in like ukulele limbo you know like if he didn't 
do anything like that. Where there's a lot of players nowadays who are kind of in limbo, where like they're really good, but they don't, you know, they don't do like kind of this breakout tune and stuff. And I feel right. like I would have been in limbo if I didn't exist in YouTube ten years ago, <laughs> or <laughs> twelve to fourteen years ago. <laughs> I would not have stood out. <laughs> you, you too, there's so much good players, you know. Yeah, Jake and Jake for sure, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we like definitely talk about like everything that you know he's like achieved yeah and he definitely like deserves all of that because <laughs> he's just like such a hard working guy right like <laughs> hard working and like down to earth yeah, so nice. yeah. yeah. really really cool so uh, uh, so hopefully one of these days you can visit us for an Aloha Friday Live Jam perhaps Jake if you're listening <laughs> to this podcast I, I think any I don't, I don't think he listens to this podcast I know, but but I'm just saying we, love might, it. we might get a maybe. call <laughs> no you never know actually you, he might you pop up you never know he might yeah. pop or, up let's just say that he I might would, pop up <laughs> well I would love like any any person that we mentioned right like mm. just uh, yeah. like Kelly Boy or like I I can get Jake to pop up here before the end of the year. <laughs> before the end of the year, that's coming up. Via phone call, via whatever. <laughs> I how much you want to bet right now? Jake, no, I on know. a Lord Friday I, Live Jam or something. I, I, I <laughs> He's like, I, why are you calling me? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm feeding my kid right now. <laughs> no, I want to tour be, to uh, uh, responsible parents. <laughs> But he he'll, he'll pop up sooner sooner than you think, guy. Sooner okay. than you think, okay. Jake Shimabukuro will be on the show. Maybe not, you know, like me on this, show, but like in a little Friday Live Jam, where yeah. like more things kind of can happen. You know, anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, anything can happen on Friday. Yeah. Um, let me just tell you, guy. Tell uh, you right now, everybody watch the little Friday Live Jams because you never know who's gonna pop <laughs> up. <laughs> We're trying to get our view count up. <laughs> Oh, we'll get it as soon as Jake pops up. You're like, oh my god, we missed Jake. <laughs> yeah, so you never know. You never know. You just never know. So uh, Spider Man asked, "How did Otasan <laughs> get such a deep tone in a uh, soprano you? Um, low G, man. Like that's honestly, you know, and that's one of the first times that people started kind of picking with their thumb. Like that's you know when uh, when that whole style first started. From from what I can you know what I can think of. So that whole style of you know like, of using your thumb to pick, uh, you're getting like thicker nail. But then it went back because guys like Peter Moon and, and you know and and those dudes were using their pointer fingers like to you know to pick. Whereas guys like Ot- uh, Ota San is getting these deep tones using their thumb. I think and Ota San what he really did mm-hmm. was make sure to use the thumb to emphasize that low G. Yeah, too, right? yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's like soprano with the low G and using the thumb like that combination. I mean, you. I have a um, and, and you know his ukulele too is a nice like little Martin ukulele. Like that's not discount the fact. It's a nice uke. So all that combination, um, and I'm guessing back then there was more uh, gut strings more uh, was more available than the kind of synthetic stuff that that we have nowadays. So gut strings are going to give you like a warmer tone. Yeah. So it's a lot of that combination. We got to think of like what resources were available to him back then. And I, I think it's a lot of that. Yeah, I think if like I pick up a soprano with like mm-hmm. a low G, I mm-hmm. instinctively like start to play like that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's just, style. Like that's you just kind of connect mm-hmm. that instrument with that setup mm-hmm. to how he plays, mm-hmm. and it works so well. Yeah. All right, so um, hopefully that answers your question, Mark. <laughs> and like, like I said, we could talk about that the whole you know the whole show. That's a great subject that I I love talking because I, I don't want to. I don't want to say like you know I'm like an expert in ukulele history, but I I do know the stuff that happened in Hawaii while I was kind of you know like learning mm-hmm. the ukulele. So I know that what much kind of led yeah. up to yeah our led generation up to that of ukulele. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of players you know like that that we didn't that we didn't mention, but the the ones that we did, those are the ones that were really prominent in like ukulele history. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, like people are gonna be like, you forgot. Yeah, this. you forgot this. Par said, you "What a, those? what about Imua?" <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know, like who's a uh, Benny who's, Chong? Benny, I mean, yeah, you got guys like Benny Chong. You got guys like you know, um, Gordon Mark. Of course, like all these guys play a play a role in there too. But I'm talking like specifically that style and who was the guy for that style and it's these dudes that we named. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mm. I think it is like how you mm-hmm. said, like we grew up, and you could tell somebody who's like not even into music, you can mm-hmm. be like, "Oh yeah, I have the call creator voice CD, right?" Yeah, yeah, and they're gonna know who that yeah. is because that's like, like 
It's like owning, you know, like a, a Maroon 5 CD. Like a lot of people like, you know, that, Maroon 5. And you don't have to be I think, like a singer. <laughs> or I think like that's yeah. even like more prolific because like if you have like a potluck or something mm. or you had like a gathering. Right, yeah. They're going to play something. Call Creative Boys. Yeah. I, would, I would say the Call Creative Boys in the late 80s and early 90s were as big as the Beatles in Hawaii. <laughs> Just yeah, for Hawaii yeah. specifically. In our, yeah. Yeah. In our you yeah. know, in, in just Hawaii, they were like that big. I mean, like, and and you still feel like the how like kind of the remnants of mm-hmm. them, yeah. Where it's like I was listening to the radio today, mm-hmm. and for every radio commercial, mm-hmm. they have one of their songs in the background. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like the you yeah. know it's not like in the foreground, but it's like oh yeah, this is a P man. <laughs> yeah. This is rhythm of the falling rain. Right, this right, is right. like whatever. Yeah, so. it's it's. Uh... They're, they're still around. Kind of like how the Beatles. Like, Beatles tunes, like, you know, it's too hairy. Yeah. yeah. And I went to, <laughs> went to the mall the other day, and uh, I just went to go grab some Starbucks because they they have um, chestnut praline nowadays. It's awesome. By the way, uh, so I, I went there, and I heard my favorite song in the world, <laughs> Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm in this stupid line. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> I have to listen to this stupid song. <laughs> oh, my God, no. I- it's the best song, right? The it's best song he the ever greatest. wrote. Greatest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. Uh, we were talking about Christmas albums earlier uh-huh. uh, before uh, the podcast. Yeah, it was a John Legend. Yeah, but um, so good. But last year, Hanson put out a new Christmas really? album. <laughs> yeah, it's it, to kind of commemorate the 20 year anniversary mm. of their first wow. Christmas album. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and so they they have oh. that song. Mm. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time, uh-huh. and it's pretty good. It's, uh, you might, you I'll, might. Uh, I'll check it out. What? I'll check it out. Give I'll it a, it out. Give it a yeah. spin. I'm gonna turn my my cap to the side, <laughs> wear my bright colored sweater, <laughs> <laughs> do all the '90s things, and maybe I might even put out my jumpers, <laughs> the, a trapper keeper in my hand. <laughs> all that stuff is coming back, right? Because like, yeah, they, they they did the remake of Home Alone <laughs> with Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did he like reenacted the scenes? And oh. stuff. yeah. So. Even that uh, um that that Bruno Mars video was like a like an 90s throwback yeah yeah with cardi b or he he has like it, it seems like he just loves like that music mm-hmm. right like all that music so mm-hmm. he wants to recreate it all right uh, so huh or before we we move on or anything mm-hmm. um you brought up you said like uh how you got your oh yeah the kamaka that's yeah. right that's right so the, i almost forgot the kamaka um i don't know if i told the story before but i got it over at scotty's music when it was still in color hill and um if you guys don't know Daniel Cummings, if you guys don't know that name, we uh, we had a lesson with him. Was it Ukulele on the Ground? Was that in... Um, I mean, um, it's still Ukulele on the Ground, right? Yeah. Is there a place? Like, yeah. It's okay. like the second one. Yeah. We, we had, you know, um, my friend Daniel Cummings and, and I used to live together. And at 409, a lot of people lived in the apartment that I lived in when I was in college. We're talking like at one point there was like eight people living in this one bedroom, <laughs> one bedroom apartment, <laughs> and we call it college students. <laughs> we call it the hive, really, because like, a lot of us like were really? writing music, producing music. It's like a police officer just can break down the door, and you just see all of you guys run yeah. out, scattered like, like freed, cockroaches. Freed. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, side side story. One of, one of the most embarrassing stories from from that one, like a bunch of us, like WoW just came out, like World of Warcraft and stuff, and we were like all obsessed with it, and uh, we we're <laughs> we don't even have our own internet. We were like uh, like mooching off of like someone's Wi-Fi that wasn't protected. Oh, oh, oh. Like there's like six, seven computers, like uh, you know, all of us like playing WoW at the same because you know it's, it's more fun to play with people in the same yeah. room and stuff. So. There's this uh, there's this girl like really beautiful girl like next you know next door you know typical whatever she goes and she you know she knows us and stuff and our door's always open and she like passes by she's like oh hey guys how's it going and you know like we're sitting down in our spots and stuff like oh hey how's it going like going off to work like yeah eight hours later <laughs> she comes back and we're sitting in the same position and she's like oh hey guys uh, not much today huh I was like no <laughs> anyway so. Uh, Daniel, for some reason, ran away to Kauai and and and, um, and left me with the rent for like three months. <laughs> so I was like, he, you know, he ran away. He wasn't like answering my calls and stuff. I guess he was embarrassed. Something happened. Um, I don't want to get into it and stuff, but he owed me like three months rent. So I came to Kauai because it was like, uh, I, I believe it was Christmas time. So 
when I came to Kauai, um, you know, I, I seek them out and it's like, hey, you know, sorry for the three months rent that I owed you. Here's here's the money. I was like, okay, cool. So I had like three months rent in my <laughs> in my hand, and I went to uh, Scotty's Music, and I'm not, um, I'm, how do I? Uh, Scotty and I have a very interesting <laughs> relationship. <laughs> you know, we're not work. Or customer strictly and professional. Uh, yeah, strictly professional. Yeah, it is. Strictly professional. So I'm there. And um, you know, some of the other workers there I'm like really good friends with and some like some of my closest friends. Um Gilburn, you know, he was he was working there and he's like, Oh, we just got these kamakas in, you know, check them out. And I was like, Oh, right on. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm playing it. And there's these people that kind of recognize, you know, recognize from Ukulele Underground, which like we've only been doing for like a year or something. They're like, Oh, can you play us a song? I'm like, Okay, cool. So I played while my guitar gently weeps. Like at full blast, I didn't know that Scotty was there. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, now you're gonna have to buy that uke now. And I'm like, ha! In your face, Scotty, because I have the money in my hand, my pocket right now. I was not like planning to buy an ukulele that day, but oh. I'm like, just, just to like put it in your face that I can buy this uke, Scotty. I'm putting this down in cash right now. What are you gonna say about that? And he's like, no. Nope. I like that you're buying from my store. It's like, actually, can I get not this one, but that one up there? <laughs> like, so I wanted him to like climb up, grab some new ones. He came back down. He's like, oh, is this the one that you want? I'm like, can I see the other two up there? <laughs> so he went back up. I was like, oh. He's like, he showed me, okay, do you want this one, that one? I was like, okay, um, it's either between this one and this one. So give me a second. And I waited until he put it away, <laughs> that one that I was just playing. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with the first one because I liked how I, you know, how I like how it felt. Oh. So went back up and and grabbed that that first one again. He's like, "All right, you're gonna have to either buy this one or get out of my store." And I was like, "No, no, no, I'm buying this one." So like, you know, I, I gave him the money. I was like, "He's like, no." I'm like, "No, I'm just joking." <laughs> so I made uh, I made Scotty go up and down like the because he had like a ladder because it was like in the, on the top of so something. Yeah, go yeah, up and were... down the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and I had him like swap out the ukulele like three or four times until I decided that first one. But he's just like, if you're gonna scratch on my ukuleles like that, you gotta buy it. I'm like, there you go. I felt just like, a spite, exactly, just a spite, <laughs> and a... it became like one of my best sounding ukuleles. Uh-huh. It's one of those, and that's why I bring up the story because it's it's like it, you really don't know where that that perfect ukulele is gonna find you. And that ukulele has been, you know, been my. Uh, my you know second hand man or duke or a friend or whatever that's been my best friend in like my uh my journeys and playing and playing and learning the ukulele like a lot of the techniques that you know that, that i learned a lot of the songs that i wrote and stuff was written on that ukulele and it was really uh an, an accident because i didn't think that scotty was gonna walk in while i was banging away on one of his <laughs> instruments <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's it's fine to yeah. you know we, we have a lot of people who mm. come to the site and they're like oh i, I ordered a call online or yeah, something yeah, okay. and they just got it and they mm. just start playing and that's like perfectly fine and you can like fall in mm. love with it mm. but there is something to be said about like loving your instrument so much that mm-hmm. you don't want to put it down no no yeah that i mean as soon i mean like i as soon as I played it, when I was playing while my guitar, I was like, man, this uke sounds really good. And I all, like, already in my brain, I'm like, I have the money. Should I, like, should I get it? And stuff like, should I buy this? Like, should I upgrade? Finally upgrade my, um, my ovation. Because I was still playing an ovation at that point, you know. I was like, should I finally upgrade to, like, an actual wooden, you know, like, Hawaiian ukulele? And, you know, so just like, just like you guys, you know, like, it's like, oh, should I, should I put the money down, or, like, to buy this? I, I had the same exact experience. I'm like, okay, I just got to pull the trigger on this one. And when I did, I was like super happy with it. And I, you know, I credit a lot of my earlier work to that ukulele because I was so inspired that a lot of songs came out and a lot of techniques, you know, just kind of flowed through with that ukulele. And that ukulele was worked on by Kamaka, by Jake and all these people. It's been touched by many hands that like, that are legends in this, uh, in this industry. And that's why I believe that's, that that ukulele is like my best sounding uke. I think um like you're you're learning like card mm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. card and, and we talk about like um how you just always have it in your hand. If yeah. you want to get better, yeah. just always have mm-hmm. it in your hand. And I think it's the same thing for instruments. It's like my the instrument that I primarily learned on like is a guitar mm. that uh actually went to California and we were looking around music shops and my mom said like 
your eyes lit up when you play that guitar. Mm-hmm. Like, are you going to be sad mm-hmm. if we leave the shop and you yeah. don't buy that guitar? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. And it, <laughs> But it wasn't the guitar I was looking for, right? I wasn't looking for, like, that specific Taylor mm-hmm. guitar. Mm-hmm. And so I bought it, and it was just like, I'm so glad I, I bought it. <laughs> How guitar. much was that guitar? It's like 500. Okay. I think okay, and okay, I, okay. I was actually looking for mm-hmm. like a more expensive tailor mm-hmm. with like a cutaway because mm-hmm. I wanted to like do other stuff. Right. And then I just ended up getting that one. And Cause that's the one that sounded the best. Right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. it fit me. And that one sat mm-hmm. next to my desk, like mm-hmm. at home. Yeah. And my mom would be like, how are you doing homework? Because you like do homework and then you pick up the guitar, you play it for 15 <laughs> minutes, you put it down, you do more homework, yeah. you pick it up. And it's just like that. I I totally credit like that mm. loving that guitar and mm. feeling really comfortable with it to like I'm not a good guitarist, but mm. you know That's the you, the yeah. amount yeah. that I can play now mm. it all it's comes because from that. of that. Yeah, it, it all stems from that. I mean, I've I was you know pretty okay. I was pretty good at the ukulele before then, but I think I really made like a huge like improvement as far as like um, like maturing with the ukulele. Like that's I credit it to that uke because that uke was a lot less forgiving because um my uh, my ovation because it's like so soft and whatever it's like a tank and like you you can mess up on it and it's totally fine but when I have that kamaka and when I have these you know now Hawaiian ukuleles if I mess up even just a little bit you can kind of tell more you know so it's an unforgiving uke um <clears throat> yeah it's the sometimes the the instrument chooses you you know like and I yeah. feel that it was like I don't. I don't want to say fate, but like, you know, me coming into that store, <laughs> me playing that, you know, playing that ukulele and, uh, and Scotty like coming at the right time. It was just all like kind of lining yeah. up for me to you have had, this you, ukulele. You had the, yeah. the money in well, your pocket. Yeah, I had the money in my like pocket. Kinda... Exactly. Because, you know, like he, Scotty didn't expect me to actually get it. He just wanted me to get out of the store. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. stop ruining my ukes. Get out of my store. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know how I should explain my uh, relationship with Scotty from Scotty's music. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> I bought instruments from Scotty yeah. before too, yeah. and but then there's also been times where I've been in a shop and then like I've been playing and I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna buy anything. <laughs> I just walk out because like I don't feel the the instruments are yeah. great. I mean, and I, and I do that. Like Mike is such a, mm-hmm. a great guy, you know, Mike yeah. who comes on the podcast. And he, whenever I go down to music and sound, he's always like, "Oh yeah, Kai, try out this guitar, yeah, try out this." this. Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, it's cool." Mm-hmm. And I think I surprised him one time where I'm like playing a bass and I'm like. I'll take this one. He's like, oh, really? Okay, cool. And he, he like, you know, he set me up with it. And he's like, I wasn't even supposed to work today. I was just down <laughs> here for like, fun. He <laughs> yeah, bought a base, so it's awesome. That's cool, man. Zero yeah. pressure. I did the same thing. Like, I, I bought, um, like, a, a Martin. That Martin guitar that's right there. Yeah. Like, I bought that just, like, spur of the moment. And it was, like, my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I think we had just gotten paid. And I'm like, it was, it was my birthday. I'm like, this is a birthday present for myself. Because uh, Heather wasn't my fiancé yet. And I had control of my own money. <laughs> now, <laughs> now like... for some reason, I have more money. <laughs> ever since I got married. Hey, there's a really good guitar that I want to buy. <laughs> I, I, I know, but... <laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> Because it's not like, this guitar puts food on the table. It's like, no, you're a uke player. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's like, well, and you get given ukes by uh, by your sponsor, so you don't really need to buy any ukuleles. Huh, never mind then. Because, <laughs> I, yeah, I can't just be like, hey, there's this guitar that I want, and I'm just kind of wondering if I can use our... Like, no, <laughs> you don't need another one. Ah, <sighs> Yes. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's yeah. that's why I'm single. Because <laughs> I don't want to be tied down to that. But you know I what? Like, I, I like buying all my guitars and just walking in being like, Mike, give me that guitar. I, don't, I haven't even played it. I just want I do. It. I do like signing out to my account now and not seeing a negative next to like the numbers. <laughs> that's Yeah, that is nice. That's, <laughs> it's like, huh, I didn't think I'd reach this point in my life where like I'm not in the red at all times. <laughs> But okay, guys. Hey, thank you so much for uh, for checking us out on Thursday Live Lesson. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you guys are checking this out via podcast, thank you so much for downloading this to your device and listening to this with your ears. But if you want to watch this and be stimulated with your eyes, sign up for UU Plus over on ukulelaunderground.com. And not only do you get to see what we're doing here on... Um, Thursday live lesson but you can also interact with us you can type in the chat you can chat with us you can ask us your questions and such and you can also get access to uh 
over a thousand videos. <laughs> I don't know how much videos we have. We have over a thousand. I know that much. We have over a thousand videos over in Ukulele on the ground. And a lot of these are uh, premium content just for our UE Plus members. That includes um, private Ukulele lessons with yours truly. We have a one-on-one coaching that we do every Thursday. It's going to be later on today. Um, we also have improvement systems. We have college-like courses. We have guest Ukulele teachers. More of that uh, if you guys are interested. And for those of you folks who are already signed up for UE Plus and watching this, thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great one. Stick around for Songs Made Easy and one-on-one coaching. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for Aloha Friday Live Jam and the Songs Made Easy Jam. Aloha. Thank you.